everyday lives, everyday values. A thoughtful and in-depth look at the issues and interests that are unique to Utah. Special discussions of history and LDS heritage. And an enriching exchange of ideas about local culture. Their everyday lives, everyday values. On KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. And it's great to have you along on this Sunday morning on Everyday Lives, Everyday Values, and I'm delighted to have Stephen L. Peck joining us, author of Evolving Faith, Wanderings of a Mormon Biologist. I'm really looking forward to the discussion with uh, Stephen Peck, professor of biology at Brigham Young University. Uh, He teaches courses including the history and philosophy of biology, uh, bioethics, and research in theoretical mathematic ecology, insect populations. This is going to be a great interview. (laughs) I'm I'm really looking for this. I remember uh, looking forward to this. I remember years ago, uh, an artist that I like quite a bit was uh, Leo Kotke, and I remember he had a book called Something the Entomologist, and I thought, now this is my kind of guy. Yeah. So yeah. what a pleasure to have you join oh, us today. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Now, first of all, let's give a little background on on you. How long have you been at BYU? I've been there 15 years now. Yeah. So uh, I, I keep being surprised because I feel like the new guy, but yeah, it's been 15 <laughs> years. And uh, from family from Utah? Yes, I, I grew up in Moab, and uh, uh, my family is all from Utah, so... Oh, what a great background yeah. in Moab. I love Moab. Oh, I do too. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to chat. <laughs> yeah. You know, get, get I can tell you the secret spots. Yeah, so. I, I want to know all the secret <laughs> spots. This area of expertise, as I rattled off your, your credentials, where, where did this evolve from? Where did this come from? Well, it, it's interesting. I've always been interested in science, even even as a, a, a kid growing up. And I had a chemistry set, and I'd mix chemicals and, and flood the house with not just fumes. <laughs> You're that kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm okay. that kid. Um, and, and so it's always, always been an interest of mine, but specifically entomology actually came out of fly fishing. I, I picked up fly fishing when I was an undergraduate at BYU. And I, uh, I started to learn the, the, the insects, and, and uh, I, I took kind of a circuitous route to get there. I majored in statistics, and, and, and my doctorate is in biomath, but I, I always kept an eye on, on, on understanding the natural world. So This uh, comes out of a uh, kind of a new entity, the Neil A. Maxwell Institute for Religious Scholarship. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, it's, it's a wonderful organization. It, it's um, BYU's flagship uh, organization for promoting scholarship and faith. Tell us about the series. What, what is it designed to, to do and, and promote? The basic idea is an attempt to to bring together scholars uh, who are interested in expressing their faith and helping people understand that the two are not incompatible. I, I look at some of the uh, the great scholars in in church history who were you know really learned men oh, yeah. and, and scientists yep. who saw that uh, the theology could be rational. And, right. You know. Right. And let's talk a little bit about evolution. You know, e- even to this day, I'll hear thoughts on what should be appropriate when it comes to evolution and Christianity, and I, I honestly shake my head a little bit. And then other times people have kind of taken it out into the stratosphere. Where, where do you stand on this? What does this book lead us into? Well, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll be right up front. I'm a huge fan of evolution. I've, I've published papers in the journal Evolution, and at BYU, evolution is a big part of the curriculum. In fact, people are often surprised to learn that BYU actually has one of the, the best evolutionary biology programs in the nation. I was on my mission in Arkansas, and I can remember I was talking to a guy, and he said he believed in evolution. And I said, well, you can't be baptized until you let go of that because, you know, I was under the impression that evolution was definitely something forbidden. And, and I regret that now because <laughs> – <Yeah, right. laughs> but I remember I got to BYU and I remember looking at the – I was in the bookstore looking at the textbooks and I, I came on the evolution book and I thought, oh, they'll take this – baby down, and I was so shocked to find there was just a straight-up evolutionary biology book. And I began to take classes in biology from some of the, some of the greatest professors I've ever had. All of them were men. 
they were men of faith who who had a deep passion for evolution and showed me that the two were really compatible. I think the most important thing I got in becoming a scientist was the sense that I didn't need to choose between the two. When you're presented or at a university learning the, the a massive amount of evidence and things for evolution and, and how beautiful it is. It's really a beautiful theory. Um, in fact, David O. McKay said that. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, I'd like to talk about where those gears do mesh uh-huh. without grinding. <laughs> <laughs> so when we come back, I, I'm interested to talk about that meshing of the, uh, the... Oh, I'd love to. The Faith and the Science, Evolving Faith, is the title of the book, Wanderings of a Mormon Biologist. We're delighted to have Stephen L. Peck with us here on Everyday Lives, Everyday Values. Everyday Lives, Everyday Values with Doug Wright. Listen for Doug weekdays 9 till noon on KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. I'm so enjoying this conversation because many people still struggle, as we've already alluded to, Steve. That's right. With the idea of evolution. We're talking with Stephen L. Peck, Wanderings of a Mormon Biologist, Evolving Faith, and let's let's talk about that meshing mm-hmm. of the gears for the rational scientific mind and the person who has faith and believes deeply in his or her religion. How, do, how does this work for you? It's interesting. I, uh, for me, I, I, I approach both with sort of an open heart. A lot of times I hear metaphors like, I'm going to put things that I don't understand on a shelf. And my science has trained me that's not the best approach. The best approach is to tr- really try to, to, to fit things together. And for me, it's been a journey in a way. And, 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 and it, that's kind of what the book sort of covers. Because I, I have to admit, it's, it's not been a road without bumps. And I've run into people that feel very vehemently that, that evolution is of the devil. And, you know, mm-hmm. this, is, this is something that... that, that should be cast out. And that perception actually has sort of a, a historical basis. It's kind of unfortunate when Darwin first put his his theory out in Origin of Species, there were a lot of clergy men and women who, who embraced it and said, this is a wonderful theory. But there, there became this sort of current that this was problematic. And it is, because a lot of the work that had gone into um, justifying a belief in God had come through trying to understand creation as it was as it was seen during the day, and evolution sort of encroached on that territory. And as as history progressed, there became sort of this on, uh, uh, animosity between the two, which still exists today. Sure. What I've seen is is it's it's unfortunate that it started that way, but it leaves out anything about who the creator is it leaves out anything about why there is a creation and those are the the provenance of religion that tell mm-hmm. us who and and why but it it's it's completely blank on on how uh, we we have very few details uh, for example from the scriptures on on anything that 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 uh, describes you know the actual process and that's where science is really strong and has discovered some wonderful things and some strong things but I think that animosity with its traditional roots is is hard to, to root out one of the the papers in the book is a response to some evangelical atheists who Richard Dawkins and, and Daniel Dennett, who have been very vocal that religion has no real place in society that's right. useful. And, and this particular paper was, was published in a, a science and religion journal. And in fact, it was selected, I'll, I'll brag here. Yeah. <laughs> it was selected for one of the, uh, in a, a collected volume of the best science and religion writing of the last hundred years. Oh, that's great. And the paper appears right next to, or close to, uh, uh, Richard Dawkins' paper in the same volume. And for me, it gives me a chance to show that this 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 doesn't need to be a fight. I, I know I'm asking you a question that could, you know, t- take an hour-long conversation. <laughs> but the, the traditional Christian view of, of creation mm-hmm. and things of that nature and those who believe the dinosaur bones was 
were, they were put here by right. Satan to deceive us and right. so on. How, how do you mesh that? Do you ever have some of our, and I'll be specific here, some of our fellow saints who, you know, point a heretical finger at you? Oh, and, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And in, in fact, I, I, I blog quite a bit on science and religion, and there there is a group of people who really do believe that, that I'm making a mistake. Uh, and and that's okay. I I I I under I actually understand fairly well the historical roots of their their being disturbed, and I think it's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. Um, some of uh, some of my family members would completely agree with that assessment, yeah. and 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 that doesn't really bother me. I want to encourage them though to to to, to sort of reconsider and 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 look at. Uh, look at things from a, 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 a different perspective. Um, from what, your scientific perspective, mm-hmm. how does it mesh? How, how do some of these 6,000 years ago, you know, on right. thus and such a date, this right. and this and this happened, right. and Adam was, you know, created, and from his rib, Eve was created. How, how does that mesh? Well, I think the way, the, the way I don't have all the answers, like I, I should point out, right? <laughs> right. Uh, you know, the spiritual side of things is fossilized so poorly. <laughs> right, right. Um, but uh, for me, the meshing doesn't necessarily take place in specifics. It takes place sort of in my, my faith that, that science is doing important and good work. And that that faith also, and I've I've seen that the scriptures are are open to to so much interpretation that I want to be careful. And when I see that the scriptures are are in conflict with science, I agree there is. And some of the things you've mentioned, mm-hmm. um, uh, we see the presence of humans way before six thousand years, and we. But I don't understand what exactly they were. I don't understand, you know, their their spiritual side, their spiritual nature. What kind of spirits? Uh, my own my own sense of things is that what made Adam important wasn't where his body came from, whether dust or evolution, but it was what kind of spirit that was placed in there, right. and that was a child of God, and that was the first time in Earth's history that that happened. And so for me, that's that's sort of the important point. And I, and there are these sticking points, um, but I think they're worth wrestling with. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a great quote in the front of the book by Elder Uchtdorf that says, "How often we have had assumptions." I I, I I'm paraphrasing it badly. In fact, maybe I could read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we've, we've both got we're both reaching for the book yeah. here. You know. Because it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great quote that sort of sets the stage for what, what I, I'm really trying to do with this. Because I, I, I really do think there are problems with sort of the, the sort of the, the, the sort of received view of how the creation took place, and, and, and a lot of that's come through sort of standard Christianity mm-hmm. and what science is telling us. But I think. If we if we're open minded and really try to 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 wrestle with both in their fullness, and that's kind of what I want to do as a scientist. I don't want I don't want watered down science, and I don't want watered down religion. I really want the the fullness of both to sort of inform my perspective. Sure. And so this is this is a quote from Elder Uchtdorf that's in the introduction to the book. He says, "Brothers and sisters." As good as our previous experience may be, if we stop asking questions, stop thinking, stop pondering, we can thwart the revelations of the Spirit. Remember it was the questions young Joseph asked that opened the door for the restoration of all things. We can block the growth and knowledge our Heavenly Father intends for us. How often has the Holy Spirit tried to tell us something we needed to know but couldn't get, ba- get, couldn't get past the massive iron gate of what we thought we already knew. Wow, that's profound. It, it really it, is. It really is. And, and, and I, I, I read that and it stunned me. And I think that, that that's sort of the object of this book. And, and my, my attempts to try to wrestle with, with evolution is I really want to understand both of these in their fullness. Yeah. And so I bring them together and I, and I play with them. And, and, and maybe, maybe I don't make you know, great strides in, 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 in making an advance in either one, but in the wrestling of it. 
and in the playing with it, I, 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 for myself, come to understand that both are important and both need to be expressed and wrestled with, with questions, with, with questioning my assumptions. Okay, what do I assume about the creation? How necessary is that? Do, are there ways to put these two together that, that make sense from both perspectives? And that's what I try to do. Well, this conversation could go on not only for hours, but for days. And I hope we have whetted the appetite for people to take a look at Evolving Faith, Wanderings of a Mormon Biology. Stephen L. Peck has been our guest today on Everyday Lives, Everyday Values, Evolving Faith, by the way, is part of the Maxwell Institute's Living Faith book series. And what a pleasure to have you, you join you us today. Thank you so much. We're gonna I have you. really enjoyed the conversation. We have to have you come back. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Again, that title is Evolving Faith. Stephen L. Peck has been our guest here on Everyday Lives, Everyday Values.